the NC State Wolfpack getting ready to play in the NCAA tournament. Mark Bergen, if you would have said that to me last week, uh, I would I would have called you a liar instantly. NC State had lost four games in a row to end the regular season, but it doesn't matter if you win five in a row and beat UNC in the ACC championship game and get that automatic bid. NC State, one of the, the five major bid stealers this year that have impacted the tournament. Uh, Mark, before we get into what NC State uh, will do or not do in the NCAA tournament, just I want to get your immediate thoughts, what, like just watching what they accomplished this weekend uh, in the ACC tournament. Going into the ACC tournament, it was more so, is Kevin Keats going to keep his job? There were rumblings about that. And at this point, leading his team to the third NCAA tournament appearance back-to-back after last year, uh, Kevin Keats and his squad are going to finally try to win a tournament game for the first time during his tenure. And what a run it was in D.C. at the ACC tournament. Compelling, must-watch television. Absolutely incredible to watch. And they're able to get it done. I mean, the three-game stretch at the end to beat Duke, Virginia, and UNC in the title game. Uh, you've got to give Kevin Keats in in his staff a lot of credit going into the NCAA tournament. Oh, absolutely. They they played at the best we've ever seen NCAA play this season. Um, it's it's the kind of thing where and to to preface all of this NCAA talk, this moment will live on for Wolfpack fans for a very 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 long time. It's one of the most uh, one of the biggest moments of success they've had since that 83 national championship since the 74 national championship some of that is because there have been low moments but also because there have been this is just such a high for a team to do um not just in the acc but in the country as a whole um the only other team to win five games in five days and win their conference tournament was yukon and kemba walker so we're setting the bar pretty high there in terms of what, how that translates to the NCAA tournament. Uh, but for the Wolfpack, it's all going to get started on the 21st, that is Thursday, at 9.40 p.m. in Pittsburgh against six-seed Texas Tech. Hey, before we go to Pittsburgh, PA as well, Lewis and Raleigh, I had neighbors lighting off fireworks in celebration on Saturday night. That's how much it meant because had they lost the title game, they would not be here to this point. And yeah. we'll talk some about matchups and everything, but you get a tough draw with Texas Tech right out of the gate. Very strong guard play by the Red Raiders. NC State has some pretty good guards themselves, though. We can talk about the dueling DJs, DJ Horn, DJ Byrne, the big fella down low. KC Morsell, though, in his perimeter defense, one of the big questions I'm going to have about the Wolfpack going into this first round matchup is this what kind of impact if any does playing five games in five days have on you come the ncaa tournament and the reason i mentioned casey morsell specifically is during that broadcast in the championship game when he wasn't on the floor and he's the wolfpack's best perimeter defender you know he's got the massage gun trying to loosen things up they were saying on the broadcast he had a sore groin does that have any impact the wear and tear the emotional intensity that it takes because they're playing for their season in the conference tournament, Lewis. Yeah. And that's, I think that's, what's so interesting because I mean, we have to remember right in all these games, we can, you know, you look at the tape, you, you give people, you know, stats and numbers, all this stuff, but there's so much that's going to be emotion. That's going to be involved for these players who can handle the intensity, who, who were, who are the lights not too bright for, how do you handle that emotional baggage that comes with winning five games like that, having this moment like that? It's so big. So my, my question is, yes, how do they handle all of that? I, I think for me, I'm expecting DJ Burns, who was MVP of the ACC tournament to kind of continue doing his thing. Uh, DJ Horn was a little bit up and down. Remember, he did deal with uh, the injury that kept him out of the Louisville game to start the entire ACC tournament run. So hopefully he continues to get healthy for State. And, and then on top of that, you what really impressed me about the Wolfpack was how many, whether they be bench players or role players, contributed in major ways. In major ways. You mentioned Casey Marcel in his perimeter defense, uh, Mo Diara. Um, you know, Michael O'Connell, like there were so many players that 
really stepped up in a big way for NC State. Do you continue to get that? If you do, I think you can compete against most teams that you're going to be facing, especially in the first couple of rounds of the NCAA tournament. But it, it, it's definitely going to be tricky. They're going to need the best from the best, and uh, they can just um, you know not let that ACC tournament run drag them down too much physically and mentally. I think they should be good. Diara's rebounding should be commended because oh, yeah. State doesn't get to where it does without that. And look, they'll have to stop Pop Isaacs. He's Texas Tech's leading scorer, almost 16 points a game. But I do want to continue the conversation about Burns. Yep. Listed at six foot nine, two seventy five. I always call him the big fella. And Jay Billis was quoted on the broadcast as saying, "It's like trying to guard a tank." You know, he almost looks like he's got the build of a lineman in football. He has excellent footwork, and he knows how to throw his weight around. He's like, to me, like college basketball's version of Zach Randolph. Both lefties, both know how to use their size. How I would attack it from an opposing team standpoint is put Burns in a screen roll defensively and make him try to guard perimeter players. That's what I would try to do if I was an opposing coach. But on the offensive end, it's not just his scoring and his touch around the hoop. It's passing the ball to seven assists seven in assists. that championship game. NC State can run the offense through him, and if you want to double him, he's going to find the open man. Think about how many hockey assists he had, too, where he passes to a man, they swing the ball one more time, and it gets the Wolfpack an open shot. Yeah, agreed. It's it's one of those things where I'm, I watch, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with the NC State team in this you know NCAA tournament, and I'm like, you you everything my my like my brain is saying oh they can't keep it going they're not going to be able to do six games in a row like at this level <laughs> but when you get it when you get a team that's playing like this yeah sometimes you have to let it ride a little bit so let's just for fun here say they beat Texas Tech their most likely round of 32 opponent mark is going to be Kentucky yep and what Kentucky does so well is score the basketball and play with pace what they do not do super well is play defense um their their adjusted de kentucky's adjusted defensive efficiency so the amount of points they allow per 100 possessions of basketball is 102.7 so on average they're allowing more than a point per possession um you know you compare that with like the top defense in the country on that metric and that's iowa state and they're down at like 87. So you, you have the opportunity to score a lot of points, but what Kentucky does offensively is superb between the, the young guns they've got, you know, Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard. Um, it, it's definitely one of the Antonio Reeves. I, I didn't even mention. It, it's definitely one of those things that if state, I'll, I'll put it this way. It, it state, I think for people outside of the triangle who are, do not like the Wolfpack very much, they kind of became this like darling Cinderella like team in the run of the ACC tournament. In order for State to continue to win games in the NCAA tournament, their Cinderella stature will rise even more because they are going to face some major challenges, especially if they want to get out of the first weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the star Kentucky players. Dillingham and Shepard are considered like by some people top five picks. I know that this isn't the strongest draft, but come June, you will hear their names called in the NBA draft. So we're talking about elite talent. Yeah. Freshman, though. Reeves is a senior, and Reeves yeah. is likely an All-American caliber player. 20 points per game, 44% from deep. So, and look, I look at Kentucky's first-round matchup against Oakland. Uh, Greg Campy, the coach there, it's his 40th season coaching Oakland. They've only made the NCAA tournament four times during that tenure, and he's never made it out of the first round or the round of 64, if you will. I don't know what the heck they call it anymore, Lewis, but the first round of the tournament, I would expect Kentucky to win. I just would from what history has shown us to this point. And again, it's going to be that top-level talent, that future NBA talent that you have to try to slow down with the Kentucky Wildcats. Yep. Let, let's keep it rolling, though. So if they let's say they beat Kentucky. Mm -hmm. You're looking then at that area of the bracket, right, in the Sweet 16. They would either be getting most likely Florida, Marquette, 
I, I don't think Western Kentucky, but Florida or Marquette, Marquette would be the two teams that I would most likely see them facing in that uh, round, that Sweet 16. Um, Florida's an interesting team. A lot of the SEC teams, I think, are very fascinating and have a lot of potential in this tournament. Uh, and Marquette, you know, I, I they've, I really like what what Chaka Smart continues to do. I think Marquette's a very fun team. Um, right, you look at their their numbers here. If I turn the page here, hold on. When you look at Marquette, they're 21st in adjusted offense, 19th in adjusted defense. Um, you know, they're two seed. They're, they're very balanced, and that's going to be a, a challenge. Um, this this Marquette team feels different than the Marquette team of last year. Mm, those are your words and not mine. Tyler Kolak injured for Marquette. So that's one thing where I'm like, in the back of my mind, Marquette gets bounced earlier in the tournament. It's like, if not for that injury, would things be a little bit differently? Okay, that's Let's fair. go beyond the Sweet 16, though, because this is where I think things get really interesting if the Wolfpack are able to go on this Cinderella run. Why is that? Is that because that's where you could see a matchup against Houston? <laughs> <laughs> or a matchup against uh, perhaps Duke. Don't say, see your Tar Heel of blood didn't want to say it, Luis Fernandez, but yeah, Houston or Duke to me look like the most likely scenarios there. Uh, Houston enters this tournament as the second favorite behind UConn to win the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And Kelvin Sampson's team is in the last four years, you've got two sweet 16 appearances in elite eight appearance and a final four run. It's like, can this be the year that Houston finally gets it done? Yeah. And we'll talk about Duke in another podcast, Lewis, yes. but that sweet 16 matchup, the potential sweet 16 matchup against Duke in Houston is like what I have my eye on when it comes to the South regional, uh, the Southern region, the South region in this bracket. Well, cause like, I mean, there's also like the, if, if, if NC state gets the sweet 16, we are now talking cardiac pack 1980. Like that, that is what we would be talking about at that point. And yeah. they'd be the national championship that year. Of course, it was Houston. So, like, I don't know. It's just it's one of those things that, like, if it start, if everything starts working out for NC State's in NC State's way, um, you're just kind of like, oh, of course. It just feels like one of those kind of like script writing type things. In most of the people listening to this podcast are going to be familiar with the Duke players: Filipowski, Roach, McCain. You know, I, I'm not going to list Duke's whole roster. Houston is loaded with scores. Oh, I know. I mean, LJ Cryer, not... former Baylor transfer. They got the Big 12 player of the year in Jamal Sheed. Well, and, um, and their defense Daniel is Sharp, absolutely Jawan yeah. Roberts. So it's like Houston. It to me, to me, this is Houston's bracket to lose. I know, I know Houston's the one seed, but it's just like this is like I don't see anyone beating Houston in this bracket. If, I don't. If not, if not for the loss to Iowa State in the Big 12. Um, championship game where they, you know, they get absolutely crushed on Sunday. I don't think people are even questioning that, but you know, that's kind of what we're dealing with here is that's going to be in the back of everyone's mind is that loss. But um, so yeah. hang on, let's, let's end here. I think this would be a good way to end it for this bracket. Lewis, sure. how far do the Wolf pack go in the 2024 NCAA tournament? I think, and I still need to do more research. I hate, I, people always like, you know, when they, um, you know, I love research. I'm, I'm a perfectionist in that way. There's like when they make like the analysts like put up their bracket like 10 minutes, 20 minutes after the bracket's been revealed. I hate that. Like, oh, no, they're going to pick off their, their brackets. not going to be good. They need to do more research. Um, but, you know, I think I think they, I don't I, I would see a hard I would have a hard time seeing them get past a Kentucky in a round of 32. And that feels you. like that feels like it would be their ceiling. Um, unless this is truly one of those magical, magical runs. One thing I will say, and I'll this is coming from uh, ESPN. They had an article um, earlier this year regarding, or I'm sorry, or, that came out earlier this week about some of like the seeds and just like some of the fun facts about the NCAA tournament and how all of that works here. Number eleven seeds have kind of been the Cinderella. Coming from ESPN here, at least one eleven seed has made the Sweet 16 and 7 of the past nine tournaments. Multiple 11 seeds have made it to the second weekend in five of the past 12 tournaments. Last year, there were, were however, no 11 seeds in the Sweet 16. The last time we had two straight Sweet 16s with no 11 seeds was 15 years ago. 
So, and as the NCAA, as, as CBS pointed out in their broadcast last night of the selection show, in recent years, the 11 seeds have actually had a better record against the six seeds than vice versa. Um, so, I'm saying Kentucky is probably the ceiling for NC State if they continue to play the way they're playing, but you'd rather be an 11 seed than not. Good stuff there, Lewis. And I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's like that second round matchup against UK is tough. Maybe you get to the Sweet 16, and then from there, it's anyone's guest. It's remarkable that the Wolfpack have even made it to this point. Uh, what a run, and I hope it continues for our sake. Yes, absolutely.